Hi everybody, my name's Annette and welcome to Cotto Verdi. Today I'm going to show you what we've planted in our new containers outside the front door. What I'm going to show you today are the containers that I chose and how I hooked the irrigation system up to those containers and then I'll show you the plants. I've chosen some polyrattan um, containers to give the front of the house more of a country vibe because our garden is very much sort of an English country cottage style, it's not formal at all. And we had such a mishmash of containers out here before. I'll put a picture up actually of what it used to look like but it was just old containers we'd brought from our old house that the old lady there had left behind mixed in with containers that we had when we lived in Hong Kong and just plant pots from all over really and they just nothing was coherent or cohesive and um, I didn't like the look so I decided that enough was enough and I wanted the front of the house to have more of a planned look to it but still be very informal which is why I've gone for the galvanized look and also the sort of rattan basket look because I'm hoping it will sort of be more welcoming and casual and it also means the types of things that I can plant in those pots can be more free and flowing and uh, so that's kind of what I've gone for. What I've also tried to do this time is um, rather than changing up every single pot each time, each season, what I've decided to do is put a few more perennials in there so that I don't have to change everything, but I can just maybe change the things around them. Obviously it's going to involve feeding the pots a lot more if things stay in their long term, but um, I'm really hoping this will be less work in the long run, but also still give me the ability to change um, the container's look through the season. Um, so that's why we've got some Evergreen. The other thing is that the previous planters, I didn't necessarily choose things for shade, and this really is a shaded area. It sort of gets um, the, the front area um, here will get um, sun in the morning. So the other thing that I've done with the containers this time is we have hooked in an irrigation system. Uh, we didn't have this before and it just became really laborious in the summer to keep watering everything. Um, we also didn't have an outside tap here, so actually watering things involved carrying watering cans through the house, which was a real pain. <laughs> but we've sorted that now. We have now an outdoor tap um, over there, over there and uh, we've hooked in an irrigation system. So even though the containers had some drainage in them, I'll show you what I mean, we drilled holes into the bottom of all the containers so that we had good drainage. And also I needed holes in there so we could feed the irrigation pipe up through the middle. So I'm just going to show you um, how the irrigation system works and then I'll go through the plants that we chose. So this is our outdoor tap and we've got a quick connector on there and then it leads down to this black pipe here. This is a firm um, outdoor pipe that will eventually get buried in soil and it runs all the way along behind the roses and behind the garden bench. You can see we haven't quite buried it yet. And then each pot has got a separate tube connected with a T connector, not a T connector, a thing that pokes through. Then it comes through the bottom of the pot through a hole underneath the pot. It comes up through the top here and then each one has got a T connector here and this hose that comes up hasn't got any holes in but this hose here that we've created a circle around the top of the pot and this hose has got um, irrigation holes here and each pot, because of the size of our pots, each pot's got about four or five of these irrigation holes. I mean, I can't give you exact instructions on how many you'll need because it will depend on the size of your pot and how many plants you've got in it. But each of the pots has got this irrigation like this. And we've done every single pot that way. You can see that most of the cables aren't buried in the gravel yet, but we will get around to it. So just starting with this pot here, this is polyrattan, and I think it looks really realistic. 
and you can get some that don't look quite so realistic but I think because it has gaps in the rattan and I mean the rattan even you know you can move it but it is plastic it's not going to rot very quickly it's quite sturdy it's quite strong the inside came lined with plastic so the earth doesn't fall out and the majority of the other pots are galvanized metal of one form or another I just tried to find um, pots that I thought were interesting. This one's got handles. That one's got another handle and sort of a, not a coppery coloured rim to it. This one came new and it's really sturdy and strong and I've just got the one tree in it. This one I really liked because it's got this very attractive pattern and I really wanted like a trough planter. So that's why we've got this one here. And this is sort of the drainage that these come with. So, you know, once it gets to this level, water will rise up and come out over that. So there is drainage plumbed in, they're not completely sealed, but I didn't think that that was sufficient. And so we've drilled holes in the bottom of those planters. And the same with this tall planter here. It also has sort of um, drainage at the bottom, but again, I didn't think that that was gonna be enough. And I wanted to make sure that they did drain properly. So we've drilled holes in the bottom of all of them. And then the only exception to the galvanized planters is this planter here, which um, has again got a, what I thought was a pretty pattern, but it's, um, I guess it's supposed to look like cast iron, but I think the color goes quite well with everything else that I've got. So those are the planters that I've chosen and I do think it's a more coherent look and whilst it doesn't look smart um, I think it looks like it's intended to be there and that it's been chosen with some sort of design in mind and I'm much happier with this plant selection. I think I would like one or two that are slightly taller but the taller pots seem to be more expensive so I'm gonna have to save up for those but I'd quite like a little bit more height not just from the plants but also from the pots anyway I'll stop rambling and I'm going to talk you through some of the plants that I've chosen and why I chose them and um, maybe give you a bit of information about them in case you like the sound of those too for a shady area in your garden so the only plants that were out here prior to this rearrangement are the two Picea Glauca that one there and that one there and they were here before and I've been growing them for a couple of years and hopefully they're going to get a bit taller and I think they give a bit of height and I'm really happy with them and they're not going to create too much shade. So here in the corner I've got a hookara. I don't know the name of it but it's a lovely red colour and I really wanted the red. I, I may bring these pots closer together eventually I'm just going to see how much they fill out over time Bear in mind that I've only just planted these and everything's going to fill out. So here I've got a Begonia Superba White and that's going to get um, quite a bit bigger and it should have flowers or some along. This is also a Begonia but I don't know what it's called. They're the really common ones that you find in garden centres and it's very pink and I really liked that. Um, behind this I've got an Astilbe, Astery White, and um, the website says it gets really tall but it hasn't grown very much this season. And then just tucked into the corner there I've got a Hosta um, Blue Mouse Ears, which um, is going to stay quite small but hopefully um, it will leaf out a bit. And then over here I've got another um, Astilbe, Astery White. I've got a white miniature Begonia. Um, last year I had a lot of success with these out here so I'm really hoping that over the next month it's going to fill out quite quickly. I've got another hookara. Um, this is a sort of really goldeny colour which I really like again because it brings some colour and um, it's already flowered. Uh, unfortunately it flowered when it's in its pot. I've got a little fern here. I don't know which fern it is um, but it seems to have new leaves that are coppery coloured which I thought went quite well with the hookara. Um, it's a very similar colour. And then in the middle I've got a pulmonium with um, some very pretty blue flowers. This is a pittosporum. It's called silver ball and um, it will naturally create a ball shape and I think it'll get to about 80 by 80 so I'm sort of expecting it to really fill out here. I did give it a little prune to make it more ball shaped because um, I felt that it had kind of got out of control in some areas but it's a really sweet sort of variegated colour. At the back here I've got another hookara. This hookara is also 
I should cut the flower spikes off because it's flowered already. But I just love this heuchera. Look at the underside of these leaves. It's absolutely beautiful. Oh, I've got some new flowers coming. So this will continue to flower. And I thought that the red and pink here went quite well with the pink of the begonia. And I've got two more hosta mouse ears, blue mouse ears there. So here in my long drum, I've got um, a still be drum and bass actually. And they, those are spent flower spikes and I will cut them off because hopefully I'll get more, but they're a very pink color, which will go with the other reds and pinks I've got. And at the front here, I've got a dichondra, which should come tumbling over the side. And I've got two more of the begonia superba whites. So here in this container at the back, I've got a uh, hosta white feather, which will get very large over time, um, some ivy, variegated ivy, and another white begonia, just the little one, and then another of the blue pulmoniums. So I'm trying to sort of repeat some of them, not make every container identical, but have um, a general similarity between most of them. So in this little container at the front here, I've got a um, mini one of those here. Um, it will get bigger. I've also got a Alexandra Great, which will become enormous over time. And I'll probably just leave it in this pot on its own. But at the moment, it's quite small. Uh, so I've planted also the pink begonia, um, uh, another hosta, blue mouse ears, which always stay very small. And then there's a fern that came as a tiny plug plant and I'm growing. And I thought the colour of that fern went really well with the Brennera. So over this side, I've got another Picea um, and it's quite tall. And I'm kind of um, hoping to, you know, just disguise the drain pipe. I mean, everyone has drain pipes, but I'd quite like to disguise that one. And that's kind of my tall, centerpiece in the back. It's got a bit of a weird shape on the top, um, so I may have to trim the sides. I don't know, I'll have to figure out if I can prune it and make it look like a better shape because it's kind of got this thing pointing up. <laughs> so this rattan container, I've got um, a hosta. I've lost the label, but I do think it's called Devon Cream and it's got um, flowers that are about to come out. A lot of people don't like the flowers, but I mean, I think they're a lovely sort of lilac and purpley blue shade, and you know, it adds interest whilst the host is growing. There's also one of the mini ferns. None of them were labelled, so I don't know the names. And I've got two pink begonias here just to fill it in. And then this is an evergreen that I planted here. I just really like the texture. I like the sort of silvery variegation. I thought it went well with my galvanized metal and I think it's very slow growing because I've had that one for a few years. And in this container I've got another um, Brennera Alexandra Great. I've got three Hosta Blue Mats ears. I mean they don't get much bigger than this so it's fine to plant them that close. I've got another Begonia Superba White, another Pulmonium and some more Ivy to trail over the side. And then at the back, I've got another one of these gorgeous heucheras that's got the purple foliage underneath that goes with the pink begonia. And I have two hosta blue mouse ears. You can see that I'm trying to stop the slugs. So this container this side is a little different because I've got this gorgeous rusted crown that I found on the internet and I really love it. I can't wait for the, this is another Pittosporum silver ball and I really can't wait for it to sort of fill out and just come out from between the crown. And then in this trough at the back, I've got three anemone serenades. They're all about to flower. It's a lovely pink color and it should give me quite a lot of height. And then I've got another Hosta blue mouse ears, a dichondra, and um, two more of the begonia superba white. And then finally, this is very similar to the other side. In fact, it's the only one that's almost repeated. So I've got a lot of little mini Picea, Hosta blue mouse ears, a heuchera. Again, I don't know the name of it. I, oh, maybe I do know the name of it. 
Topaz Jazz. I try to keep the labels in the containers and just hide them so that I don't forget. And this is another um, a Stilby um, Astri White. So that's the end of the tour of our new uh, front door pots and everything that we've chosen for this shady area. I hope it's been interesting and maybe useful for you to help you choose some things for a shaded area in your garden. Uh, don't forget with the hostas in particular that the slugs and snails will love them um, and you can use many different methods to get rid of them but my favourite method is to come out when it's getting dark or after the rain um, in the evening and hunt them down <laughs> and uh, that's how I combat them. The other thing that I did do was I bought some of the copper tape that you can stick around the pots and the copper tape is supposed to deter the slugs and snails because it gives them like an electric shock. Um, I haven't used it mostly for aesthetics because I looked at my beautiful pots they all look so pristine and galvanized and I didn't really want the copper tape around them I thought of putting the copper tape at the bottom rather than the top I mean obviously that would be wise um, so anyway if I find I have a lot of problems with slugs and snails eating my hostas then I will use the copper tape and I'll show you if I do have to use it I'll show you how I do it but I think you just stick it on um, anyway, I'm hoping I don't have to use it because I like the way they all look so before I go, I just wanted to say thank you for watching and do subscribe to my channel. That would really help me and like this video if you enjoyed it. Um, anyway, uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time. I'll show you what we've chosen. This is... Hmm, driveway is not finished and... So many little planes. <laughs> Um, so, um, anyway, uh, thank you for watching and, uh, uh.